Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of TeamView Community Legends. I'm Michael Morgan, and today I'm very happy to be joined by Mr. Corleon Young. Corleon, how are you doing today? Thank you for having me. Doing well. So today we're just going to be talking a little bit about you, your new book, um, a little bit about basketball too, and we're just going to see where it goes. Let's go. Let's get right into it. So you grew up in Wichita, and you Correct. went to East High School. What was it like growing up in Wichita? I tell people, Wichita is the greatest city on this planet. I must say, it was backed by my whole community. Mm -hmm. When you have your community behind you, it makes you feel a certain way. I mean, it, it boosts your confidence. Uh, right. It boosts your morale and what you feel you can do. You set goals high. So this city had a huge part and many, really everything to do with what I've ever done as far as my professional career as basketball and even socially, some of the things I'm doing now. And speaking of that, what was the community's reaction to you making it to the NBA? Well, I, to be honest with you, uh, and the move I made, it was not really publicly accepted. And it was something I had to deal with, not with my community, just with, in, in general, with the tradition of going to college, not for going high school, um, the tradition of things. But in my heart, it was something that I always wanted to do. Um, I have a great family that supported me, backed me 100%. And so when it came time, I needed to make that move. Um, I tell you the truth, I was really nervous, but every child has to have this feeling one time, and that's feeling like you can achieve your dreams and goals. And so it was my goal and dream, so I pushed forward and just actually did it. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard, it was hard. Um, when you do something like that, it's, it takes a team. So I must say, I had family, pastors, teachers, coaches, best friends uh, backing me. And when you have that, it makes it easy. So my career has been easy, I must say, because I've had a great team um, backing me. Going out of high school was something that you can't do now. Uh, you have to go to college for one year. Mm -hmm. And it's easily argued and debated. And my thing is, I solely feel that achieving one's dreams and goals is one of the major things I would like for teens to do. I don't care what it is. Right. I, it, Straight A's, go do it. Uh, JUCO first, uh, do it. If you need to prep for for your college in a different manner, going to get a trade first, do it. Whatever your dream may be or your goal, set it and go after it. And it's kind of hard to not be in the realm of education when I didn't go to college. And I'm just now your freshman at 38. So, um, But it's never too late. And I push this to kids. Never, 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 never think that it's too late mm -hmm. because you can always go back and excel your education. I mean, you exceed your education so you can excel in life. You know, and this is a little bit of a harder question, but really, what was the reason behind you deciding to forego college and go straight to the NBA? Good question. <laughs> Tough question. Yeah. Easy question. Okay. Here. See, everything that I've done is actually what I've wanted to do. And when you feel it, when you believe it, I mean, it's hard for anyone to tell you you can't. So I had many people calling, uh, I could say his name, David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, mm -hmm. called 24th in Lorraine. Coleon, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And, you know, we just don't think that this decision could be a really good one. We're not for sure how it may go. And I said, you know what? This has been my dream forever. I respect you and love you. Thank you for the phone call. I'll see you at the draft and I will get drafted. I will show that the kids out of high school can play. College, in some sense, people ask me, what did I would have missed from foregoing college? Meeting people like you. Friends, friends that to this day that I would just know, call you up and say, how you doing? Let's go to Chipotle. Um, friends that could be in different areas of business where if you ever need, you can say, hey, I have a question and it could help you in that area. So college would have put me in a great melting pot amongst people, and that's life. And there's a journey that we all have, and I'm just blessed, honestly, to be given the opportunity to go out of high school. So there's no formula to why I did it. It was basically a situation and a decision that was here. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good answer, honestly. You know, and speaking kind of on education as a whole, and you know, talking about you going through high school and then 
you're assigned to Fargo College and um, everything. Now I understand, you know, you're working with kids all the time, you really preach education. So how important is education to you concerning our youth and just people in general, honestly? I drill it. I drill it just the same in the same manner that I do my fundamental training in basketball. I drill education. I drill social skills. I drill coping skills, communication, all these different things that it'll prep you for whatever area you want to go in life. Media, sports, business, I mean, whatever. And one thing that I do understand is that education comes through growth, through life. You know, life is a trial and error. So as young adults, I try to give them the proper tools to cut that error down. So trials will come, but you're learning on a pace that is normal. You can have huge setbacks. And sometimes uh, I drill these things and the kids don't understand the emphasis I put on some. But it's just because I see things far in the future that have to come for them. And I'm very, very passionate about education. Very. I believe that we must always continue to improve our education at whatever level. And the only way that by doing that is obviously reading. So I push reading uh, on all levels. So, you know, education is dear to me. Yeah. And I want this to be known that no matter what port, uh, point of your life you're at, 15 or 50, it's never too late to start it. And never too late to continue it. So, Corleone, you are writing a book right now. And, you know, just speaking on reading and everything that you were talking about, how has being an author changed the way you think about things? Big. Huge, big time, because what you want to do is you want to have the right delivery. And in the book, what you want to do, ideally, and with my book, is I want to change people's perspective on not just me, when I came out of high school, but my career. Why I went to the NBA. Really, because I've been used, I can be used as a tool to help people. That's it. Right. And so, you know, writing this book, it, it, I mean, it'll change you because you go it deep down inside you now. There's a lot of things that I want to give, but I have to make sure I give it in the right manner. You want the book to always be publicly accepted. You want to be morally correct. You know, you don't never want to offend anyone or do the race, religion, or whatever. So when you're writing a book, you really, you know, you want to be really careful, but you really want to be open because you want your readers to really feel you. So my book gets in depth on my life from 18 years all the way to my 18th birthday getting drafted to the NBA, uh, highs, lows, we talk about my favorite teachers, we talk about my best friends, we talk about some very, very ideal points that I grew up in my life growing up that it made me like I am today. As an athlete, you don't really get to show this side of you until you know. So it's more about you, the you person. You debrief and you retire. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's more about you, the person, than you, the player. Almost. I want people to step inside Corleone, mm -hmm. the person, and they'll see why. I see why he's like he is. I see why he says some of the things he says. I see why he drinks a lot. Of, I mean, you know, Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Right. I just, oh, okay. <laughs> Pepsi is my drink, but, you know, I can't promote it. I promote good things that are positive. I tell kids to eat right. Mm -hmm. Get your drink. Get your sleep. Like, incredible. Remember, um, Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Perfect. I'm a Hulkamaniac. Okay. <laughs> so I'm old enough to be a Hulkamaniac. So I, I tried to drive all these things that he was giving us then. Eating right, sleeping right, living right, loving your neighbor, helping others, giving. You'll get it back. Don't look for it. It'll be there before you know it. So that's what the book kind of all together. I want these kids to be able to read my book or they could go to school one day. Something happened. They said, I read that before. Go back to my book and use this book as a manual. Mm -hmm on how to deal with it. Because I know I've probably been through every situation that our teens are gonna go through. Right. And then some that I even know they're not gonna go through having to prep for. So, mm -hmm. writing the book will, I change you. It'll make you a better everything though. Better friend, it'll make you a better parent. Make you a better person. Because when you're giving somebody something to help them, I hope you're giving it for the right reason. Yeah. And that's my whole, that's my whole thing is when they help people, so. Yeah. And you know, we talked before the interview and we were talking kind of some of the stuff you do for our local youth. Um, if you could just give one piece of advice to youth in the Wichita community, what would it be? Dream big. I got a few, so we'll touch on a couple. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine. Dream big. Dream big. Our kids don't dream like 
I used to. Mm -hmm. At 38, I used to lay in my bed and dream of what I want. I dreamed of going to the NBA. I actually did. What happened was this. I dreamed of going to the NBA. All those things that come along you think you're doing, but then people start believing in you. Mm -hmm. And they start preaching this and putting power in you. And they start telling you, you're gonna make it. You're gonna do it. So then in return, you start believing in yourself. And then it changes your swag, so to say, a little bit. Your confidence, you say, well, I can do it. And so what I tell kids is this. Break status quo. The status quo that's set may not be for you. You may have to go beyond that. So do more, live more. I mean, do everything past the bar. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you'll never fall short because you'll be meeting your own standards of success, not the standards that were set for you. That's one thing I give them. And secondly, you know, going back to living, gotta live right and live morally. Find some way to occupy your downtime. School gets out at 3.40, what are you gonna do till nine, eight? Find things to do. Occupy your time. Get involved in your community. <laughs> First thing. But that starts at home, so you gotta help your parents. You got to be that ideal child that's taking out the trash, that's making their bed, that's just doing those things. Because obviously, the kid next door, you won't believe it, they're watching you. Kids learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So if we all put forth the effort to give the ideal behavior, which is positive and morale, right. man, we all help one another. It's kind of like what you do in the small, you do in the big, so it's like what those little tasks. On that. the team, like if you were my teammate, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be my job on the team to have your back. Mm -hmm. Outside of there, practice though. You may need a uh, bad day of practice, you need somebody to talk to. You stormed out the locker room, I ran you down. That's my job. Mm -hmm. So we have to do this because we all on the same team. Right. Regardless of race, religion, and all those things that we get divided by. And I ultimately use sports, and I'll say this lastly, get involved in something social. Dance, theater, uh, video, media. Get involved in something that can transition into a career. Right. Start now. So you don't have to be a junior or senior in college. What am I gonna do? It's simple, man. Yeah. Be a kid, grow up, stay a child, don't rush it, everything will come, you know. And those are some of the things that I had to learn though. So I say those with passion. Wait your turn. And kind of focusing more now on the NBA, do you think that the NBA and Adam Silver and all these rules that have been changed and everything, it's where you only have to go one year of college and then you can come out. Do you think it's failing some of the younger players, some of these guys that are coming out too soon? Um, do you think they should be going all the way through college or do you think they should have a choice like you to come out during high school? I say this humbly and wholeheartedly. This generation is a little different. As our generations change, our kids change. These kids here are a little more, more mature athletically, but mentally and emotionally, they're a little more immature. And that's due to just because how we as parents are raising our kids this way in the generation, that's not bad. In some sense, we shelter them, we protect them. So in some sense, it's great for them to go to college because college is ideal for learning all these social skills that you'll be faced with. I'll just tell you this, and it doesn't really sound well, but in other sports, kids are able to pursue their professional career early. And they're able to do it a lot earlier than our NBA, quote unquote, athletes that wanna come. And so it's a two S four, you know, we could allow them to come, and there'll be some negative things from that because we're letting immaturity into the league. Right. Not stable emotionally. Mm -hmm. That league is tough. That year is hard. 82 games is rough. We got kids coming from high school. I was a kid. I wasn't a young man. You see, college breeds young men. And so, you know, some people don't like to hear me say it. It's all based on the situation. It 
this is a situational type thing. LeBron was ideally ready. Right. Kobe, my good friend, was ideally ready. Mm -hmm. Kevin Garnett, one of my mentors, was ideally ready. You know, me, maybe I wasn't ready. In my heart, it was my dream to go. And so it's hard as a parent to hold your child back from what, you, what they may believe is their dream. But if we can somehow come to a collective agreement on both ends, our student athletes, our NBA program, and college, and come somehow come together and make both attractive. Not just going to the NBA to make money, right. but if you're going to the NBA for a purpose and pushing and propelling the generations to come, all for it. So it's that two-edged sword. I, but I just must push this, that I push all of our kids, student athletes, to seek education, to seek education. Corleone, it was so awesome to have you on here on our Community Legends show, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on and share some of your wisdom and knowledge with us. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed myself. Anytime, anytime. Yeah. I feel free. For sure. All righty. So thank you, everyone, for watching. And as always, I'm Michael Morgan. This is Community Legends, and that's Buckets.